Hi, Mark Donovan here, and today I'm going to go over when we need to include an alternate airport in our IFR flight plan. There are certain weather criteria that specify that we have to include an alternate airport when we're filing an IFR flight plan. We'll go over what those weather conditions are. We'll also talk about standard alternate minimums and non-standard alternate minimums and where you can find those. So hopefully you'll find this video helpful and useful, and if you do, consider the like button and subscribing to the channel so you get notified when I come out with my next video. Okay, when is an alternate required for an IFR flight plan? Well, per 91.169, it specifies the required items in an IFR flight plan. And more specifically, it calls out needing all of the items associated with the VFR flight plan, which is defined by 91.153A. And those items include the aircraft identification number or tail number, the type of aircraft, the full name and address of the pilot in command, the point and proposed time of departure, the proposed route, cruising altitude, or flight level, and true airspeed at that altitude. The point of first intended landing and the estimated elapsed time until over that point. The amount of fuel on board, the number of persons in the aircraft, and any other information the pilot in command or ATC believes is necessary for ATC purposes. Now, in addition to all of the VFR flight plan items that need to be included in IFR flight plan, we must also specify an alternate airport, except as provided in 91.169B. And we'll get to that in the next page here. So when's that alternate um, required to be included in the IFR flight plan? Well, there are two times when an, I, uh, when an alternate airport must be included in the IFR flight plan. An alternate must be listed in the IFR flight plan if the visibility is expected to be below three statute miles and the ceiling's below 2,000 feet within plus or minus one hour of the estimated time of arrival to that intended airport. This is known as the 1-2-3 rule. And secondly, if the intended airport of arrival does not have an FAA-approved instrument approach, uh, we must file an alternate. Um, if we plan to land at that first airport of intended landing um, that doesn't have an instrument approach, we can only descend below the MEA and land if we can conduct it in basic VFR conditions. Otherwise, we have to go uh, to our alternate airport. Though not required by 91.169, it's also a smart idea to conclude an alternate in an IFR flight plan if there's a likely chance of thunderstorms forecast within plus or minus one hour of the estimated time of arrival at the intended airport. So what qualifies for an alternate destination airport? Well, for aircrafts other than helicopters, the alternate airport minimum is specified in that procedure or, if none are specified, the following standard approach minimum. For precision approach procedure, ceilings must be 600 feet in visibility two statute miles or more. And for a non-precision approach procedure, ceilings must be 800 feet in visibility two statute miles or more. Non-standard alternate minimums for instrument approaches are denoted by the letter A embedded in a black triangle on the approach plate. So you can see here in this cutout, we have a, um, an approach plate with a A in the triangle, and this is basically saying it's going to have to be something different than that 600 or 800 feet, uh, two statute miles visibility in order to list this particular instrument approach procedure as an alternate. So where can we find these alternate approach uh, minimums? Well, non-standard alternate approach minima can be found in the U.S. Terminal Procedures publication. Um, or if you're using something like ForeFlight, just click on the alternate minimums tab under the arrival procedures and then look for the associated city that you're planning to come in at. Um, and you can find the required minimums. In this case here, if I just uh, enable my pointer, we can see for Lurconi Airport, uh, for using the localizer, or ILS, uh, for category A's and B, we need 1,500 uh, foot ceilings and two statue miles of visibility, and so on and so forth for different categories of aircraft or different approaches uh, for Laconia. So non-standard alternate minimum are due to a number of possible reasons, terrain, obstacles, or other unique geographical considerations uh, for that airport and the particular approaches that are available at that airport. Non-standard alternate minimum can also vary by aircraft approach category. In some cases where there is no reporting weather or there is an unmonitored navigate, the airport itself might not even be available as an alternate airport to use and list in an IFR flight plan. 
So those are the basic requirements for when we need to include an alternate in our IFR flight plan. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel so you get notified on my next video.